hi so today we are going to try to understand the various uh, functions structure and layers of epidermis very specifically we'll ask uh, we'll talk about the cells that are there then we'll talk about the various layers and finally the functions of the epidermis so let's get started so if you remember the structure of the skin you'll see primarily we have three different layers although epidermis and dermis are considered the primary layers of the skin hypodermis is technically not the layer of the skin but because it's very much similar and performs the same role it's considered a layer now now let's get started with the epidermis so general characteristics of epidermis if we were to talk about so we know that it is stratified means many layers squamous that means the cell shape is flat plate like and epithelial one of the types of tissues that we have in case of animals it may contain four to five distinct layer types and can be around 30 to 40 cell layers thick it is keratinized that means it has a deposition of a protein called keratin which makes it dead and also impervious to a lot of attacks from the environment which can be water which can be germs so it's a very much protective layer that we have now let's uh, briefly discuss the various types of cells that you might have in your epidermis so essentially we have four different types of cells the first is keratinocytes the cells which will be rich in keratin and are responsible for making the uppermost layers of the cells dead now millions of uh, dead keratinocytes actually rub off every day so you have a new epidermis every uh, let's say 25 to 45 days the second layer that we are going to talk about a uh, second cells that we are going to talk about are melanocytes now the name is pretty much informing you that it has a pigment called melanin now what is the job of melanin you know very well that melanin absorbs uv rays now because it absorbs uv rays it protects the dna from damage the third most important cells that you have here are known as dendritic cells now these cells are also known as the Langerhans cells after the German uh, anatomist now these dendritic cells they ingest foreign substances hence are a part of your immune system the last is tactile cells tactile cells are the are present at the junction where are they present they are present at the junction of epidermis and dermis and these tactile cells is associated this is associated with sensory nerve endings hence the pressure that you feel is because of the sen uh, tactile cells getting in those uh, getting in with those sensory nerve endings to form tactile disc or also known as Merkel disc so this is because this is a reason that your uh, skin is very very receptive to the external pressure so these are the different kinds of cells found in your epidermis now these cells are distributed across different layers now let us go and try to understand the different talked about the three layers that is epidermis dermis and hypodermis epidermis the various kinds of cells that are there layers of your epidermis now remembering the sequence of layers is uh, a bit difficult task so uh, this is an acronym that can help you baskets spinning with grains look common now if, if you uh, take the word so baskets stratum so every layer will have a stratum in the beginning 
So stratum basale, stratal stratum spongiosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and stratum corneum. So these are the five layers that you will find at most. So the lower most is basale, stratum basale, and the upper most is corneum. Now we have to try to understand the basic characteristics of each layer. So let's start with the, uh, the lower most layer and that is basale. Stratum basale, also known as stratum germinativum, is the layer, uh, let me just correct the spelling, germinativum. Now the name itself says germinate, right? So it is a single layer of cells, single layer of cells. And these single layer of cells are stem cells. So they are going to divide and push one cell per division towards the upper layers. So if this is a, a basal cell, so it is going, going to divide and eventually it is going to push one layer towards the upper uh, cell. So this way there are new keratinocytes being produced. So stratum basale is mostly having the stem cells, a single layer of stem cells, which produce new keratinocytes because they have stem cells. Now, there might be tactile cells also in this layer. You should remember that because the tactile disc has to form to make it more receptive to the pressure. Now, let's talk about the next baskets spinning, right? So the next layer that we are going to talk about is spongiosum. Now, spongiosum is having a lot pre-keratin. Pre-keratin, they are not exactly keratin filaments, but they are pre-keratin filaments. And these filaments expand throughout the cytosol. They expand throughout the cytosol to attach to desmosomes. If you remember, desmosomes are junctions uh, between the cells and they look very much like having spines. That is why uh, the name comes as spongiosum. It, uh, these cells, they look like spines. Now, this layer has uh, keratinocytes because they have pre-keratin filaments. These filaments eventually will turn into keratin. And they might also have melanin-like granules. So there can also be found melanin-like granules in this layer of cells. Also, you'll find a lot of dendritic cells in this layer. Why dendritic cells? Because you have to protect the inner uh, medium from the pathogenic attack. So these dendritic cells, they are phagocytic. Now, moving on to next layer that we have is basket spinning with grains. So, granulosum. Now, this is where the keratinization begins. Very important point. This is where the keratinization of the cells begins. So the cells would start filling it with these keratin cells. And because uh, of the filling with keratin cells, the cells will flatten and uh, their nuclei and organelles start to disintegrate. Because remember, the uppermost layers, they are to be dead. They, they can't be living. Also, water-resistant glycolipids, lipid means it's not going to be friendly with water, right? So water resistant glycolipids starts to be spread across in the extracellular matrix. So in the extracellular spaces, this is uh, this starts to be spread. Now what this will do is 
this will start restricting the diffusion. If you remember, the epidermis does not have any nerves or vascular supply. The basement membrane, everything diffuses across the basement membrane from the dermis. So this glycolipid layer, they start to reduce even that diffusion. Now, just above these uh, stratum granulosum, you have a lucidum. Lucidum is largely found in thick skin uh, cells, means where the skin is really thick, right? But you should understand that it, it won't be found everywhere. It's just three to four layers, right? And it won't be found everywhere, but it's just beginning three to four layers of the corneum. But the cells die in the granulosum. So here the death happens because of the restriction event of the glycolipid, because of the extreme keratinization, because of the fat flattening of nuclei and the cell organelles. Lucidum. Lucidum is uh, like a thin translucent layer. Thin translucent layer. And this thin is uh, sometimes considered as a subdivision. It's sometimes considered only as a subdivision of corneum in, in, by some authors. Now, uh, here, what do you, uh, that a distinct feature in here that the keratinocytes are completely dead. Okay. And the gummy substance, keratohaline granules are found here. Keratinohyaline granules are found here. So they aggregate and they form parallel rays called tonofilaments. Parallel rays, they start forming parallel rays and we call them as tonofilaments. And finally, you have the last layer, basket spinning with grains look common, that is stratum corneum. Now stratum corneum is the outermost epidermal layer. It is around 20 to 30 cell layer thick and is all dead. They are all dead. Why they are all dead? Because there's a lot of keratin, everything is gone. The plasma membrane, there's a very thick plasma membrane there. So basically these are nothing but sacs of plasma membranes filled with keratin, right? So uh, this is lost. About an average person loses, you can say 50,000 dead cells every minute, right? And uh, this amounts like 18 kg in a lifetime. So this is a very, very protective layer because it is dead. Hence, it restricts the growth of fungi or bacteria on it, right? So even though the uppermost layer is dead, it performs a very important task of saving the uh, person from any attacks. So these were the five layers. I hope this was helpful. So today we basically talked about the uh, epidermis, which is the outermost layer of the skin. We talked about the general features, uh, like it's mostly a dead and very, very heavily keratinized. And that it's also found to be made of epithelial cells, which eventually die. And finally, we talked about the various kinds of layer, corneum, lucidum, granulosum, spongiosum, and basale. We uh, learned an acronym to remember that, mnemonic, a basket spinning with grains, look common. I hope this helps. Thank you. Cannot find a topic you're struggling with? Tell us in the comments section and subscribe to make sure you're first to know when we cover it.